um, is now that you have been emboldened and you know, now you're able to say and do what you want under a Trump administration, now you are energized and, and, and sort of reignited in your passion for freedom of speech, capitalism, property rights, and all the kind of stuff that made this country awesome. Now that you've got all that stuff, customary to learn how to pe pronounce people's names before you heckle them, but, but I'm glad you're having fun. Now it's time for you to go. Um, what? You think I'm in my sort of... Um, These peculiar, nonsensical slogans they keep shouting because they don't have any arguments left. It's very depressing. I feel sorry for you. It's very important to have strong interlocutors. It's very important to have strong enemies. You know, we want to know that we're definitely right. And at the moment, there's just no intellectual opposition whatsoever because all they do in the face of different facts and arguments is going, hey, hey. Um, it's, I feel for you guys. I do. I do. Um, okay, I'm, no, I was thinking to myself the other day, actually, um, in a rare moment of narcissism, um, that I was probably the most interesting person in America. But what would be even more interesting if I had a really strong uh, adversary. If I had that, you know, some you know, like sort of Gore Vidal, William F. Buckley kind of like lifelong rivalry. You know, somebody I could grow with intellectually and have big debates, and sometimes they win and sometimes I win. Someone's actually good enough to go toe to toe with me on TV, like week in, week out for years, and I just can't fucking think of anyone. Somebody on the left, well, maybe Shapiro, yes. Um, <laughs> that's very mean of you, very mean of you, poor, poor Ben, poor little Ben. I've told him I'm happy to do it. I mean, he's now, he's now bedded himself into this lie that I backed out of it, like, you know. What's that? Well, Glenn Beck is definitely on the left, but, I, you know, I don't like to intrude on private grief nor bully the disabled, so I'm not sure... <laughs> I'm not sure it would be fair for me to appear in a TV studio with him. I mean, he was close enough to suicide after Ted Cruz U-turned. I think after losing, losing to somebody he called a danger to the Republic and the reincarnation of Goebbels, if he were to lose to someone like that in a debate, he really would finish himself off. It would be down into the bowl of Cheetos and never up again. Um, so, I don't know, maybe. I mean, I'd be perfectly happy. Look, I'm happy to talk to anybody. I mean, I'm not always going to be the smartest person in the room, normally, but not always. Um, I'm not always going to be, you know, I'm not always going to win every debate. I'm not always going to answer every question as, um, uh, as, as, as brilliantly as I did his. But, um, I'm very happy to debate anyone. Um, what tends to happen to me, though, is that people agree to and then back out, claim that I was the one that backed out, and then never respond to emails. So you can read between the lines on that one.